Hi, this is Bruce Himmelblau with Blue Sky Video Productions, full service video production company, YouTube strategist. Are you looking to improve your website? Is your website not even showing up in Google or Bing? Are you on Bing? Are you, are you on AOL? So your website is important to you to get traffic because you don't own your social media. You do own your website. And here to talk about how to improve your SEO with best strategies is Yusef Chauhanguri. I'll get that name correctly one of these, these days. So uh, thanks for being, joining me. And uh, how you doing? Thank you for having me, Bruce. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. So let's uh, before we even get into the website stuff a little bit, is we have never met in person, but we've known each other for like 10 years. And I think that you were my very first co-host on Blab. Oh, yeah. Uh, I remember those days. Yeah, if you ever, if anybody here even remembers Blab, put something in the description saying, I remember Blab. So Blab was a great platform. It got people um, connected. And it was before, way before Zoom. And it was more of a social platform where people just kind of gathered together in one single location. Yeah, I do remember that some people were doing Blab for like 24 hours nonstop. Yep. <laughs> Like the whole show for 24 hours, like guess one one guess after another. It was crazy. Yeah. So again, we can actually do that on, on Facebook these days, but I think they limit you to what two hours, four hours on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So going live is really is really good. So again, if uh, if you're in the if you're joining us live, uh, drop out in the comments where you where you're watching from. If you have any, have any questions about your website, you want to put your website in there. Shameless plug. Uh, Joseph will be glad to give you a free two hour. Um, no, no, just kidding. Well, <laughs> hey, yeah. they, they, can, they can always come to my daily live streaming. <laughs> yep, and then we'll talk about that too as well. Uh, you do do a daily live stream on website optimization because you are the optimization guy, yes, sir. So, let's get started. What is some of the low hanging fruit that someone can do right away if they know how to handle the, the their, uh, website themselves because a lot of people still farm it out to a webmaster or at least they can add, these are questions they can ask their webmaster yeah that's an excellent question actually a lot of web designers or let's say web developers i would say a lot of them probably have just a very very basic knowledge of the uh, search engine right which means you either have to hire somebody to do that for you or if you want to do it by yourself then you should learn the basic. And the basic is, uh, and I believe you mentioned that before, and that is the on-site optimization. Okay, so the on-site optimization requires you to basically optimize every single page. And if you build a website, hey Tim, what's going on? Hey Brian. If you build a website on, let's say, self-hosted uh, WordPress-based website, then you can, can you can install two, actually you can install one plugin, uh, but the popular plugins right now is the Yoast, and the newest one is the uh, Rank Map. So you can basically use either either one of them. Once you install this plugin, then you have to do the basic research based on your pages because what Google wants to know, Google wants to find out what does that particular page is talking about, like what is it about, right? So it's not enough for you just to have images and content. But you do have to put the, the, the title tag, the, the meta tag, and the alternative text and uh, different other content on the back end of the website that can help the, the search engine, the, the what you call it, the, the Google bots or the spiders or the crawler to basically come and index those information properly. Okay. So that, that is the most basic thing. And, so, and the first thing that people have to actually do because search engine by itself has a, has a two factors, right? You have the on page and you also have the off page and the off page that's that means the process and the technique that that takes place outside the website but the most important thing right now is just take care of the on site that, that's the most important one yep so uh, i just pulled this up real quick um so we talk about yoast and yoast is uh in, is it for wordpress alone or can you install it on, on a non-wordpress site it's only for WordPress. Uh, Yoast and also uh, Rank Map is another one. Hey, Eric. And so basically what these do is they kind of uh, guide you through uh, making your channel better uh, optimized. Because the other day I was on my website and 
it said I didn't have a my my uh, my site map updated, and so yep. I went into into, into Yoast. And so yes, we we updated your your uh, your site map like two days ago, and again, I want to explain to some people what a site map is, and that there's also another alternative called a video site map. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, <clears throat> one of the beautiful thing about Yoast or Rank Map, uh, this is for people like us who don't want to get involved with coding and <laughs> anything like that, because if Yoast wasn't available, that means you have to gather the information the the, the, the meta tag description, the title tag, and the backend stuff, and give it to the developer, and they'll use the coding to put on the backend. So Yoast basically helps with that. And the cool thing about Yoast, wh whatever optimization that you're going to do on the backend, it will give you some sort of um, uh, considered like a like a like a personal SEO assistant. So it will give you some numbers, some suggestions, some ideas on how to improve it as you go through, right? So one of the other technique. This is an old school way of when you build a website. Typically, developers create sitemap. So the sitemap basically all the folders, all the link throughout your website structure. And if you build it uh, with, with the proper terminologies and not complicated uh, words and whatnot, it makes it easier for the bot to come and read every single page on your website without missing any of the pages. So uh, again, the good thing about Yoast, Yoast has that feature, that feature that they can that they can help you to create a sitemap. Once you create the sitemap, you take that link and log in to your Google Search Console, which is a free service from Google, and do a site submission, okay? Now, you do the site submission, not right away, you do it after you make sure that all the pages are properly optimized, then do the site submission, that way the, the Google bus will come and basically reread and re-index everything to the index server. So what if you had a website up there for a couple of years, you really haven't touched it at all, and now you decide, okay, this SEO thing might actually be a benefit. Can you still, I guess you're, you're already listed on Google, but you're not listed, you're a ranked very high. That's an excellent question. You can actually resubmit it again because you can go back to the website, run another analysis. Uh, if your website been sitting on, on the internet for a long time, so by, by default, of course, automatically it will, it will end, index it anyway, right? Because uh, according to Google, they have more than, what is it, 200 so-called factors. I think it's more than a, th a thousand factor factors. So, but even then, it is always good to go back, double check every single pages, uh, check the ranking. And there's so many tools out there that can help you with the ranking of the, of the site. What is it at? What's missing? For example, you can use a application called the Screaming Frog. It's a free application you can download, plug in your website, then it will show you every single pages, which one is uh, optimized properly, which one is not, right? You can also uh, use another site called WooRank to see your status level, how you're doing, right? And go back and make the adjustment. So that should not be an issue. But again, you can definitely submit it. In some situation, what people do, uh, let's say uh, your website did index properly, but, but the problem is some of the meta tag description had a, a grammatical error or some missing parts. So you can make that changes on the website, but it's not going to reflect right away on, on the search engine. So what you have to do, you have to go back and do a, a sitemap resubmission. So you can invite the, the bot to come back and reread re everything. So I think that here's an in-depth question from Eric. Uh, what are your thoughts on MySpace? Yeah, MySpace is cool. <laughs> it's still around, right? Who owns it right now? I think Justin, what's his name, the, the, the singer, I think he owns it. Yeah, well, I think I still have a profile on, on MySpace, but I think I forgot my, my password, so I haven't been back in there. And the thing is that, yeah, a while back, um, I used to have all my forwarding um, posts from my, my Twitter account go through to MySpace. So I think nice. every time I post to Twitter, it gets posted to MySpace. Very nice. And I know Tom so left. I think, <laughs> thing, I think AOL is still a thing. And, but again, um, we talk mostly about Google. Is Bing still active? And should you be paying attention to Bing as well for SEO? Yes. I mean, even though Google is the, I would say, 70 to 85 percent of the market holds on google but as a business why not for you to be everywhere right you as a business you're not going to stick to one thing if there's an opportunity for your customer to find you through bing you should also be visible on bing right because the algorithm on Bing is a little bit different and what is the population of bing Bing is usually what more, more probably older people who have logged into uh, windows explorer and get get bing as a default search engine yeah 
So if your target market is the uh, is in my what uh, fifty five plus, uh, Bing is definitely something you want to look at. The other thing, uh, believe it or not, our my team, the online advertiser, like we do I have a team of Google and Bing and social media uh, expert advertisers. So what we do, we actually also run Bing ads. So believe it or not, the fascinating thing about Bing ads versus Google ads, it's like almost like fifty percent less in terms of uh, you know ad spend. And still, it brings good result for our clients. Uh, that's something like a lot, of, a lot of business not tapping into it, but luckily we're doing that and we're sharing these sort of resources with our clients. That hey, if you're running Google Ads, why not give it a test on Bing so you can get more clients? And are there any search engines besides Google and Bing? You know, um, you have Yahoo. Yahoo. <laughs> right. You have Yahoo. Then what else do we have back in the day? We have like a lot of stuff, but I think they just gone. Opera. Is it is Opera doing doing anything these days? Alta Vista and what else? Uh, do you remember CompUSA? <laughs> but again, um, is Yahoo a browser or is it a search engine? Because I yeah, like it. okay, because yeah. like Firefox is a browser, and people yeah, can Yahoo use is, it. A, is a search engine. Ask, Yahoo is a search engine, yeah. Um, ask ask Jeeve, Jeeve, yeah, this also search engine for like question based, which is actually good because you can go ask Jeeve and ask questions and see what comes up, and maybe you can optimize your pages for those questions and see if you show up right there, right? Right now, what I recommend a lot of uh, businesses when it comes to like content creation is to check answerthepublic.com. So when you go to answerthepublic.com, you can actually see what kind of popular questions your audience are asking. And, we, and you can click on, on those questions on, and it will take it to Google and it will show you what kind of result is coming up. So now you can use this data, this information to write content for your custom. Yep, well, I've been doing that with Quora where I get a lot of questions on Quora. I'll answer the questions and then um, put it on my to-do list to do a video on those questions. Good, good. That's very good. And I'm, I'm glad you did that because what ha when people ask me, like, you know, how can how can I attract my audience? Well, if your audience is asking questions, you got to provide the solution, right? So, yes, Quora is another place. I know Yahoo Answers is another one. So you definitely check those too. Because, yeah, again, I think in the early days of Google is – they usually uh, ranked you based on how recent your last post was to that website. And so you always wanted to keep your website current. And right. a lot of times people just post, build a website and then they put it out there and it sits there for several years with no updates. And the easiest way to put updates to your website is to by creating blog posts and adding content that way. Right. You're right. This is very important because now you are writing the content because your, your customers are, are hungry for an answer. Right, so you did the proper research, and now you wrote it, and you optimize it, and now you can share them on other social platform, or if you have an email list, you can use that to put it out there. Because one of the most challenging for a lot of businesses is that they don't know what to, what kind of content they need to write. For example, uh, even though they know their business, but they don't understand or they don't realize what kind of question their audience are asking. So, right. answer the public is a, is a great place, and of course, like you said, the the Quora is another popular uh, uh, site as well. And so here's a question about and the options on domain extensions. Uh, is .com still the uh, the number one and .org the uh, most, most best for a nonprofit? Because there's also like .biz and .tv and .info. From my from my experience, I don't think I don't think those matter anymore because Google looks at other stuff. Even if you have .io or .info, the fact that you have amazing amazing content that 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 is impactful that that answer the questions of your audience and you optimize the pages according to google and you implement other factors to basically help you to get the visibility and rank so sometimes you can do everything but that doesn't mean that if you miss one part it's going to harm you right you will end up uh, occasionally you will see some upside that don't, that don't even do the on page seo and yet they're ranking very well why if you analyze them they probably uh, probably have like you know ten thousand backlink from some relevant sites. Then Google decided to basically you know put them on the front page. You see what I'm saying? So even though Google says you know yes we have two hundred factors or a thousand factors, we don't know most of it. We do our best to optimize it you know in in our best abilities. So so even if you miss a few parts, you're not going to be in trouble. But at least do the do the the, the primary basic one, which is the on page SEO. So even if you don't make not the uh, Dot com or dot org. As long as you do the on-page SEO, you should be good. So you're talking about backlinks. Backlinks are basically off-site optimization, things you have less control over. 
but in some cases you do have better control like with our YouTube channel we have what's called an associated website link so that we can actually embed a link within the video back to our website but there are other easier ways if you can't um, authorize your uh, associate your website which is descriptions and tags but also guest hosting uh, guest blogging on other sites and what's some of the other ideas of getting your post your, your content or your links would the, guest, would the guest blogging have to be a little bit careful because you know Google did penalize a couple of sites a couple of years ago the companies that, that used to offer guest blogging they got penalized because unfortunately when the system was working some people unfortunately abuse it <laughs> right and that's how Google penalized them but I would believe that guest posting is still work but you have to be careful how you do it so what I mean by that if you find another high-ranking blog or another site that will take your uh, content as a guest post just make sure the content that you're writing is very unique to that site only. That, that, what I mean by that, you don't have the same content on multiple other places as a guest post. Just keep it very unique, okay? And focus on just providing value on for that on, on that site. Another option you can use LinkedIn because right now LinkedIn has a feature we can actually blog on LinkedIn, so the LinkedIn community can see it. So you can do like part one of the blog on LinkedIn while the readers are reading. And on the bottom, it says, you know, to continue part two, click here <laughs> or just click here. And the part two will go back to your part two blog post on your page. That's another technique that you can implement. So here's a question. Um, any, anything to actually avoid to reduce your SEO? I guess you're talking about more black hat type stuff. Yeah, anything. And think of it this way, because th that so-called black hat technique, even though it's not illegal, but it's just uh, according to the Google standard, they, they don't approve of it. Right. Think of it this way. If you do anything that it, that causes manipulation, then it's best to avoid it. But if you do things to provide value to your audience, to your customer, then that's fine. For example, let's say, uh, Brian, you have a blog post, amazing blog post on your page. What you want to do to do a backlink, now it is kind of very challenging. There are many programs and services out there that can help you to reach out other businesses. But what about if you can take that blog post and convert it into an infographic? Same blog post, you convert an infographic, then go to any of these high-ranking infographic website and post it there. Or you can take the blog post and turn it into a PowerPoint presentation and upload it to SlideShare, for example. Or you can take the blog again and do a video about it. You see what I'm saying? So you're basically repurposing and putting it on different areas so your audience from those areas can also can also find you and come back to you. Make sense? So that's that's how I, I would do it if it becomes like you know using the off-page uh, SEO because you have kind of full control right now in what kind of site you're picking and you can do it by yourself and the whole objective is to bring more audience through the same awesome content rather than just you know contacting the other side to 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 do a guest post for example. But when you're saying repurposing, you're also saying don't duplicate it and and post it somewhere else the exact same content. You're saying augment it to that platform. Yes. Like, because when you do infographic, you're not going to have the full, if you have a blog post with a thousand words, the infographic going to have like probably 10 bullet points and you put it on an infographic site and you can say like to read, to read more information about this subject, they're going to click on it and bring them back to your blog post that has a full detail, for example. Make sense? So here's a follow-up. Um, when you are redesigning a site, what is the best way, in your opinion, to not lose ranking and traffic? Tim, that is an awesome question. So the first thing is you have to make sure, uh, copy all the links, make sure that all the links are the same, all the meta tag and title tag are the same. And if you are going to redesign it, do not change the actual link. So let's say you have a page that says, I don't know, uh, timlord.com slash about. If it's about, just keep it about, right? Now, if you change it to something else, then you have to set up a redirect, you know, like 301 redirect to tell Google basically, hey, I'm the same link. I did not change. So the most important thing, check that. The second thing is look into your Google Analytics. It's very important. And this is another mistake that unfortunately some uh, most businesses do when they change the design of the website. They tend to forget the data that Google Analytics is telling you, like, you know, what pages are most popular, for example, uh, you know, the like top 10 pages or top 50 pages, because you don't want to make the changes just based on the look you got to make the changes okay you know what i want to do a redesign but at the same time i want to keep the same content i want to keep the same links 
I don't want to cause an issue because there is a possibility that even if you do that, let's say you, you change the whole links for every single page, you update the content a little bit. Okay, if you do that, you will notice that there's going to be a little bit, a little bit of a drop on the on, on the ranking, but eventually will come back. Especially if you implement the 301 redirect, the 301 redirect. If you set that one up, then eventually all the ranking will come back to how it was. And so, what's new? What's on the horizon for Google? So I know we've looked about online design and off or on page design and off page SEO. What's around the horizon for, for Google and Google search? Uh, voice search. It's another thing right now. Uh, the technology came about in 2012, but it's super advancing. Imagine your customer going to look for you on Google Home or Alexa and your information shows up. So that's the thing I believe businesses need to pay close attention to because by the end of this year or next year, 50% uh, of the search going to be voice based and that has its own algorithm. So when you, basically when you say, um, hey Siri, uh, what's the best restaurant in the area? Yes. And then all of a sudden Siri pops up with. Yep. <laughs> well, my, phone, my phone's just sitting here and it's still listening to me. So. Yeah. So, again, so, so the search is uh, Popeye, Marcos, Grill, and Kebabs, which I've never even heard of. So maybe I'll check them out today. <laughs> Brian is asking here, uh, do comments on blog uh, blog posts have any SEO value? Well, if you and this is a very excellent question too, Brian, because if you go to these, uh, again, high-ranking blogs and you read the content and you comment, like a really good comment and answer and everything, and when you do that, a lot of them are going to ask you for your name, right? Some of them will ask you for email and your website. So imagine if you put your website and you leave this comment, eventually what happens, if I'm going to search for your name, your name is going to be attached to that website because that website is only highly valuable. So in a way, it, it might help, but you don't want to go too crazy on it, right? You just have to go and leave your comment, uh, like, a, like a really good comment, because that comment is attached to your website as well, right? So I don't think it will, uh, it will kind of bring you to the website, but at least your information or your name going to be attached to those block sites. And let's talk about real people because a lot of people in, in the early days of website design, I designed my website for the Google engine. Actually back then it was probably Yahoo yeah. uh, or, or even Netscape or something like that. Yeah. So I, designed, I designed my site so that the search engines would find me. It was not a pretty site. So these days, <laughs> What is, what's the difference between catering to Google and catering to your customer, your viewer? That is a beautiful question. The first thing is, of course, you have to cater to your customer. Like, for example, a lot of, a lot of people don't talk about uh, ADA compliance, you, American with Disability Act. So now when you build the website, you have to build it that it actually fits them in terms of user experience. Do most of us do that? I don't think nobody talks about this subject, right? Because the to make the website compliant for the ADA, it's part of the... Um, the UX UI factors, you know, like user experience and user interface factor. That also actually has an SEO value because if you build the website that gives an amazing experience to your audience, Google takes that into consideration, right? So the first thing is you build it for your customer. Then secondly, you have to follow all the guidelines because you want the search engine to understand what every single page is for. And at the same time, you want your audience to understand what every single page is for when, when they do the search for you. And better yet, why not just do the ADA compliancy? And the ADA is partial of that is your alt tags, where you have a picture, and a lot of people forget totally about the the, uh, the describing what the picture is. And if you ever look at a website and click on the picture and go into the code, which I do all the time, and I know everybody yeah. else does too. Yeah. So um, in between, you don't just say rabbit if it's a picture of a rabbit. Yeah. You usually would do. It's picture figuring your person viewing the pic or visiting the, the website is blind and right. you're hovering over that picture and it just says rabbit. Instead, it should mostly rabbit hopping over fence or something like that or rabbit eating carrots. Absolutely. And I recommend everybody to because when it comes to AD compliance, actually, it's more than that. There's so many things like some of them are coding. Some of them like stuff that we never think about. I know WordPress has a plugin for that, but the plugin is not enough. But what I would recommend anybody right now to test your website, go to this link. And this is the link that most attorneys use before they sue somebody, <laughs> okay, for ADE compliancy. It's called the Wave 
dot webaim.org. So go to wave, you know, like the wave uh, dot uh, webaim.org and go ahead and put your website right there and it will show you what's missing. The contrast, the structure for every single, you can check every, every single page. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Wave.webaim.org. Excellent. So I want everybody to go there and check it. Now, not every developer knows this. So you need to find somebody that understand what the AD compliancy is, right? And this will also help you with the search engine because now Google is looking at your website. Oh, wow. You actually built it even for the, for the people that are disabled, which means they're going to have a good experience. Okay, let's give you another boost for your site. Excellent. So before we go, um, you do this for a living, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I run a di uh, digital uh, mar uh, marketing agency here in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> so um, let me see. Is this this your site? Yes, onlinebusinessowners.org. I know somebody asked about the .com. <laughs> I have the .org. Because back then when I was looking for .com, I couldn't. Actually, I found it, but it cost like $3,500. So I just went with the .org. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so basically you do uh, website design, um, marketing, solution. You also have a live show that go, uh, airs every day. Yes, Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. Central Time. Yep, and 7 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. For those people on the East Coast, because I think there are some people still on the East Coast. I know, <laughs> right. I know us, in the, us in the central time zone, we live a, a, a ch charted life because our news comes on at 10 o'clock as opposed to 11 o'clock. Right. So, yes, again, so your, your website is onlinebusinessowners.org. Yes. So so we, we build websites. We do search engine. We do all kinds of ads from Google to Bing to social media ad. We do social media management. We do also branding, graphic design, all that stuff. Uh, but I also train and, and consult other businesses. So, um, that's, that's like right. yeah, that org is kind of – so we also go to uh, traditional marketing agency. We train their staff on how to use digital marketing. Or some company will basically hire me to do training for the in-house on how to implement digital marketing. And before the, the crisis, um, since 2012, I've been doing like 10 uh, workshops and one seminar per month right here in San Antonio every month. Yep, I think I've actually tried to tune in a couple times on your live streams. Yeah. So great. Um, last, any last questions? Uh, we got a. Uh, are there any plugins that help ADA? There, there is one plugin uh, in WordPress, but again, uh, the the plugin cannot do a few things. For example, like when Bruce was talking about alternative text or alt tag, the plugin cannot do that. You have to manually go there and add the alt tag, right? So there is one plugin I can't remember right now, but if I do, I'll definitely send it to you, Bruce, so you can share it with Brian. There is one popular plugin within WordPress that can help you, like you know, change the color contrast, do a few things. But I wouldn't heavily rely on that. If you want to use it for now, that's fine. Uh, but you definitely have to have somebody to look at the code and make the changes, uh, you know, so you can so so the people with disability can have a, an awesome experience with the website. And then, uh, are you do you work on a retainer or do you work on one offs? Uh, well, I when it comes to depends if it's a website, you know, you have a different project on the website. Some clients will pay fifty, and the other half when the project is finished. Some clients will pay like twenty five percent every month until the payment is paid. When it comes to um, all the other services like the the search engine, the social media, the online ads, those are monthly retainer. You have to pay every month so we can manage it and help you out. Excellent. So here's my uh, my shameless plug: we take uh, subscribe and follow. Uh, both you can subscribe and follow both uh, Yusuf and myself. Uh, Yusuf, you're pretty much uh, Yusuf Chow Hurry and everything. Yeah. Yeah, you can just look up my name in Google. <laughs> and that's also important it is with self branding, you want to be able to be found. Yes. Because uh, this morning when I went to uh, look for your website, I didn't know the name of your website, but I knew the, I knew your your name. I get some companies that come to San Antonio, like big companies when they come here for like a conference or an event, what they do, they, they, they type a local digital market or local digital marketing speaker. And luckily I show up sometime. So that's how I get, uh, you know, deals like that. Again, um, being, being found, being searched, uh, it, both branded and non-branded search. Uh, if someone types in, uh, 
online business owner website design or types in website design, that's a, that's a non-branded search. And if they type in Yusef Chalhuri mm -hmm. or Bruce Himmelblau, our names show up and our websites show up. Yeah, that's very important. I'm glad you mentioned that because you have, on one hand, you have the branding search, which means if people are searching for it, that means your brand is already established, which is good. Then you have the other search, which is the non-branded one. This is where the keyword comes in. This is where like your customer actually don't know you, but they're tapping this word and the words and they're finding you. So that's also very important. Yep. So here, let's, um, do you have a, a general search that you use uh, test out for clients? Because again, here's one trick that I, I've always learned about uh, using keyword keyword searches. Um, let's go here. So if time, someone types in, which I guess we're not going to see my, if I type in a search. Let me rephrase that. Um, I mean, before you, do the, before you do the search, I mean, the first thing is you have to do that keyword research to see right. what your customer are searching for and what kind of site shows up. That way, if some of these keywords that you never thought about it are popping up and some of the site similar to what you do, okay, then I can definitely utilize those information on my website as well. Yeah, so again, there's a thing called the, the Google Alphabet, or Excel, Alphabet search. So mm -hmm. if I type in video, video games, video editor, video yeah. software, those are showing up at the top of the top of search. Yeah. I'm typing type, type in M, you know, maker, montage, then marketing, marketing statistics, marketing agency. So if you type, start typing in those things, that's one way of learning what are the top seat search terms that people are looking for. Right, because you are using the autocomplete to show you the result. You can also go to people also ask and also on the bottom. You can also plug in a Chrome extension called uh, Keywords Everywhere. If you check out keywordseverywhere.com, this is the Chrome extension you can plug it to your Chrome browser. So we'll give you more information that you can download it in Excel sheet. But this is one way to do it. Well, great. Thank you again. Uh, you've been fantastic. I think I hope we didn't lose too much of our audience in the uh, delving too deep into the into the weeds. But, um, <laughs> You kind of covered the, the what you can do now. Yes. Um, what can focus do on the on-page SEO. Focus on the on-page SEO for now. Excellent. So thanks. Uh, once again, if you have not subscribed to our channel, either on Facebook or on YouTube, we are BSVP TV. And we'll be back next week with a program called Know Your Numbers, which is learning your uh, how to decide what your KPIs are and how to measure KPIs and how to run your business. Because if you're not running your business, your business will be out of business. Just a hobby. <laughs> it's a hobby. Excellent. Thank, thank you much. And, thank you. Uh, and thanks you all for tuning in.